Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. Company present Captain Midnight. Captain Midnight, brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, at the same time, by the Skelly Oil Company, Skelly Jobbers and Dealers. But say, suppose you were 16 years old and you owned your very own airplane. Suppose you'd been given your government pilot's license on your 16th birthday. And supposing you'd flown your own plane all by yourself, all the way from Denver, Colorado, to Chicago, Illinois, and back again. Say, wouldn't you feel proud of yourself? Well, all that has actually happened to one of your own fellow flight patrol members. His name is Dick James, and he lives at 1900 Locust Street, Denver, Colorado. We're all mighty proud of him. But you know... Dick himself doesn't seem to think it's anything very unusual at all for a 16-year-old boy to be flying his own airplane. Dick is a loyal member of the new 1940 Flight Patrol, and he recently wrote us a swell letter in which he said, You bet I got a thrill out of my solo flight from Denver to Chicago. It was a thrill of a lifetime, and I want to do it again as soon as school's out. I listen to Captain Midnight because I like adventure stories, especially about aviation. It's sure fun to be a member of the 1940 Flight Patrol, and I hope every boy and girl in America belongs to a Flight Patrol club. Well, wasn't that a swell letter? But say, listen to this. How'd you like to have a swell picture of young Dick James standing beside the very airplane that he flew on his thrilling cross-country flight? Well, you'll have that picture, and you can read the whole story about this daring young Flight Patrol member in the new holiday edition of the Flight Patrol reporter that's waiting for you right now at your Skelly service station. Yes, and that's only one of the swell features in your own club newspaper. There's the true meaning of the secret password, Cobra Hopa, the names of those who sent in the best answers, the thrilling picture map of Captain Midnight's Mexican adventures, and dozens of other things to thrill every air-minded young American. Now remember, here's all you do to get your own free copy of the new Flight Patrol report. Stop at your Skelly service station the next time you're out with mother or dad in the family car. Just show your Skelly man your Flight Patrol membership card, and he'll give you your very own copy of this swell club newspaper absolutely free. Why not have mother or dad drive by your Skelly service station and pick up your free copy tonight? And now to Captain Midnight. Yesterday, Chuck and Patsy saved their lives from the danger of a herd of stampeding steers by machine gunning some of them and thus separating the herd. When the rest of the herd had passed, they raced to the nearby mountain field where the plane flown by Von Griff, Ivan Sharp's former chief pilot, had been left standing. But when they neared the ship, they discovered that Von Griff, who had been lying unconscious on the ground, had disappeared. Chuck exclaims as he and Patsy are running. You're right, Patsy. Von Griff has disappeared. There's no one there. Come on. Let's hurry. I'm running as hard as I can. Gosh, I can't understand what's happened. I can't either. He was lying on the ground near the plane when we left. Well, here we are. Let's see where he could have gone. Well, there's only two possibilities that I can see. Well, what are those, Chuck? Von Griff had covered consciousness well, and... gee, in that case, he couldn't have gone very far. But the thing that gets me is this. If he recovered consciousness sufficiently to walk off, why didn't he get in the plane and fly away? Well, the only answer to that is he must have wanted to do something near here. I believe you've hit it. That must have been what he came here for in the first place. But you said there was another possibility. What is it? Just this. Someone else has come along and taken him away. You mean on foot? Well, that's what I did mean. But someone could have landed in a plane and carried him off. Well, do you suppose we ought to look around for him? No, I don't. I think we'd better get out of here as quick as we can. What do we do then? Take off? Yes. I think this fellow's able to take care of himself. What do you think Captain Midnight would want us to do? Well, he'd want us to get out of here and get back to headquarters as soon as we could. Come on now. Jump in that rear cockpit while I get in the front one. Okay, Chuck. It won't take me long. There now. Are you all set? Right. Give it a... And I'll turn it over. Hey, what's the matter? Something wrong? Quick, Chuck, quick. Start the engine. Okay, Patsy, right now. 
What's the matter? There's a man over on our right. He's running this way. It must be Von Grip. We're getting out of here. Hurry, Chuck, hurry. He's got a gun in his hand. I haven't got time to warm the engine. I'm taking him off straight ahead. Hurry, Chuck. He's getting closer. In the meantime, we return again to Captain Midnight. Hidden in the top of the dust cloud above the herd of steers, Captain Midnight and Senor Pareda are flying at a thousand feet. Listen as Captain Midnight explains. Uh, we've turned the clock. They're heading to the west. I think we've saved them for today. Shark's men won't get them turned around again, at least not before tomorrow. They see me, Captain. I only hope that Chuck and Patsy do not meet Chuck's plane. Uh, that's just what I'm worried about. I think we've been... Uh-oh. Look over there. What do you see, Senor? A plane. No, there's two of them. Ah, now I see. No, me, Capitan, you are wrong. There are more than two. Uh, we're going to find out about this. But you go back. You go to meet them. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. But, Senor, I see three. No, I see four of them. We will not have the chance. Get your machine gun ready, Senor. Look, those four planes are circling around. Well, I wonder what... Oh, now I see. They're looking over that plane that Chuck landed. They do not know what to make of it, Senor. They think that Chuck and Patsy must surely be dead. Yes, it's got them puzzled. But they'll be spreading out in a second. Look. Look over there to the northwest. A lone black plane. That must be Chuck and Patsy. Say, yes, Senor. That is the direction they would be flying. Yes. That's what makes me sure it's Chuck. Soon these black planes, they will see Chuck. Oh, no, they won't. They're going to see us first. Oh, oh, there. One of them has seen us already, see? He turns. He comes this way. Yes, he's rocking his wings to get the attention of the others. Oh, then, now, hold tight. I'm making a vertical left bank. Ah, senor, the wings, they stand on end. Yes, I'm doing that so they can see us better. Get ready now. They'll be on our tail in a minute. They come this way, senor, all of them. Ah, uh, that's what I wanted. Now watch carefully and tell me if one of them changes direction. See me, Capitan. I have the eye on them. If one changes the direction, I will tell you. I want every one of them chasing us. I don't want a single one to head toward Chuck. They do not go that way, senor. They come toward us with the wide open water. Yeah, well, I've throttled down now, senor. I'm going to let them get closer. But four against one, senor. We will have the bad time. No, uh, no. I'm not going to get that close. Anyway, I've got a trick or two up my sleeve. That is a very good thing. Otherwise, we will not get away alive. Now, tell me the instant they begin to open fire. I watch carefully, senor. When I see the tracer bullets come, I tell you. All right. Whatever you do, be sure to tell me if one of those planes changes direction. Say, Mr. Pantan, I will tell you. The nearest pilot, senor, he opened fire. Are all four planes chasing us? Say, Mr. Pantan, they all come this way. Shall I open fire? No, not yet. We don't want to waste any ammunition. And if my plan works, we won't need to waste any at all. They come too close, senor. I shall have to shoot. Hold it, senor. Hold it. Watch this. What is the matter, Mr. Capitan? I do not see well. Ah, the dust cloud. We are in it. Yes, you bet we are. And they won't dare risk following us in here. Hours pass. Ivan Shark is seated in his study. Gardo has just entered and says, I got bad news for you, Chief. Oh, Gardo, you have bad news, eh? You think I did not know? You failed. The herd was scattered all over the western part of the valley. I cannot understand how you and your pilots could have been so stupid. Well, we was carrying out your orders, Chief. We still don't know what caused that herd to turn. You know very well what caused the herd to turn. Another pilot in another plane. There is the answer. Yeah, but what about that plane on the ground, Chief? That one with the wings torn off. You landed and examined it, did you not? What have you to say? Well, yeah, sure I landed. I, I looked it over good. It was one of our own planes. Yes, but not flown by one of our own pilots. Well, uh... Oh, listen, Chief, you've got a big break today and you don't know it. Indeed, Gatto. And what was this break? Well, I think Captain Midnight's kicked the bucket. Huh? And what makes you think that? Well, he was flying that plane. I'm sure of it. His engine must have conked out on him, and he landed in front of that stampede and hurt. But you found no bodies around the ship. Well, uh, of course not. You see, he tried to run for it, and them steers run over him. Why, there couldn't have been nothing left. Indeed, yeah. Gatto. There have been times before that I thought Captain Midnight was dead. But you yourself know that he's always managed to reappear. Yeah, yeah, I know, Chief, but, but somebody must have been in that ship. What about that other plane you saw? The one you chased into the dust cloud. Well, I don't know who that could have been, Chief. Captain Midnight didn't have but one of our ships. That is what you think, you stupid ox. 
I flew over the Aztec Temple today, and I saw no trace of the plane that landed at the foot of the waterfall. You told me that plane could not be flown out of the space in front of the temple. But I am convinced, Gardo, that it was. Oh, it couldn't have been, Chief. Nobody could have flown that ship out. It was, I tell you. Someone, Captain Midnight probably, flew that plane out. But enough of that. I gave you a job to do, and you have failed. We have got to get that herd through the pass tomorrow. And if it is not through, I am going to hold you responsible. And you know what that means. Oh, I'll get them through tomorrow, Chief. I, I swear I will. If not, you will be taken into a certain chamber off of the passage below. It is some time now, Gardo, since I have allowed Fury to indulge in her favorite recreation. Drawing artistic designs with hot steel. <laughs> Do you understand? Oh, no, Chief. No. Don't turn me over to Fury. There is one way, Gardo, and only one, whereby you can avoid the reception plan for you. Oh, I'll do it, Chief. I'll do it. I'll get the herd through. I swear I will. Somehow, I do not believe you will succeed, Gardo. As I look into your eyes, I see the beginning of the end. You have been with me long enough, Gardo, to know the final reward for failure. Oh, don't, Chief. Don't send me down to the underground torture chamber. I'll make good. You don't even have to pay me. I'll get every one of those steers through. Just give me one more chance. Hmm. That must be Fury now, Gardo. I do not believe I will wait for tomorrow night. Oh, don't, Chief. <laughs> don't. Don't. Hmm. So it is you, Fang. I thought it might be Fury. No, Master. It is Fang. I have important message. Very well. Come forward. Messenger has just arrived from Rossman, Master. Excellent. And what is the message from Rossman? Message from Rossman. Say he has found new trail into Circular Valley. His men are ready to attack Captain Midnight's party now. Excellent, Fang. At last the end is in sight. Go now while I complete my plan. Go quickly. Yes, Master. <laughs> Well, just when things are beginning to go Captain Midnight's way, something else happens. Tex Rossman, the cutthroat who has been in charge of the ground force surrounding Captain Midnight's refuge, has found another means of getting into the valley. This opens up a terrible peril to Captain Midnight and his friends. What will happen next? Tune in tomorrow to Captain Midnight. Once again now... If there's any of you members of Captain Midnight's 1940 Flight Patrol who don't have your free copy of the new Flight Patrol Reporter, you better stop by for it in your family car tonight. Remember, all you do is show your Skelly Man your Flight Patrol membership card, and you get your Flight Patrol Reporter absolutely free. Say, you'll surely want to see that picture of Dick James and his speedy monoplane, the thrilling picture map of Captain Midnight's Mexican adventures. The names of those who sent in the best letters about the true meaning of Cobra Hopa and dozens of other thrilling features in the new holiday edition of your Flight Patrol Reporter. So stop at your Skelly service station for your free copy tonight. And don't forget to tune in again tomorrow, same time, same station, for further transcribed adventures of Captain Midnight. Brought to you by the Skelly Oil Company, Skelly Jobbers and Dealers. Will Ivan Shark wreak his anger on his henchman Gardo? Can Captain Midnight cope with Shark's new plans? And what about Chuck and Patsy? Be sure to listen tomorrow. Until then, this is Don Gordon, your Skelly Man, saying goodbye and happy landing!